Hello everyone, Danny Girl here with Stamp in the Pink Barn coming to you from Tucson, Arizona. Welcome everyone. Well, it has been a nice and overcast day today, but it has been warm. I think it probably hit, oh, that's right. I changed the settings on my watch. I was gonna say I could probably see it on my watch how warm it got, but I think it was in the high 60s, maybe even 70s. Um, it says it's 71 right now. So that means I'm assuming it was probably maybe on the higher side of the 70s today. So it was pretty warm today. Hello, Peggy. How are you, my dear? You're probably dealing with some snow and some ice and all that fun stuff where you're at. So they do say that, hello, Patty. I, I saw that you're heading back north, or back north, <laughs> back east. Hopefully uh, you don't run into any bad weather. <clears throat> Hello, Frida. How was your little fur baby? I did see that um, he was a little turkey and got into some um, unnecessary, it looked like foam that he had eaten and made himself pretty sick and you had to spend some time at the vet. Ugh. Hopefully he's doing much better. That's crazy. <laughs> so um, we have been dealing with a lot of craziness. I meant to this week uh, or this last week go live with you guys just sporadically um, and show you all the fun goodies that I have gotten from the new upcoming January April catalog and life has just been insane. So for those of you Sadly, he passed this afternoon. Oh my God, Frida. I am so sorry. Oh, that's bringing tears to my eyes. Whew, I am so sorry. Wow. That's crazy. You have had him for a long time. Oh, uh, sorry about your loss. I'm glad you're in here. We're going to try to occupy your mind with doing some stamping and making some very, very beautiful cards today. Hello, Becky. So, um, yeah, we've been dealing with some crazy animal stuff, too. So my son decided um, a couple months ago, we went to the local animal shelter and we uh, got um, a cat for my son because his cat, when we moved, um, wound up uh, disappearing into the wilderness, which a lot of cats do around here. Um, now, so we knew that when he got another cat, it would be a strictly indoor cat. So we went to the shelter and he wound up finding a cat that had just been surrendered that, uh, day before we were there. So he hadn't been in the shelter very long, but the one stipulation was, is that his front, um, from like where his elbow and his paw is, it was broke right here. So because he was a, um, shelter animal, they had us do a foster adopt for him. So in order for him to have all of his medical stuff taken care of and he had to be spayed and all that kind of stuff or not spayed, neutered, whatever the one is for a boy cat. I think it's called neuter. Anyways, I don't know. I'm not big on that kind of stuff. So, um, or hip on the lingo. And so, um, he, we've been calling them trying to get him in for a surgery. So they had him scheduled on Thursday. So at seven o'clock in the morning, we take him in for his surgery to have his, they were amputating his whole leg. Um, we were going to have him amputate just at the, uh, elbow. So he would have a little nub to walk around on, but we realized even from where the break was here every time, hello, Denise, every time he would dig in his litter box, he would wind up splitting that open and it would bleed. And so he's been confined inside of my son's bathroom because we couldn't risk him bleeding all over our furniture and household stuff. So we knew that he was going to go in and have the surgery done. Hello, Sheila. And so they went in and they amputated his arm and they did his little tidbits and took care of that. But he was supposed to have it done Thursday. So Thursday, we get a phone call Thursday evening, probably around like five ish or so. We get a phone call. Um, they had gotten so backed up and I'm assuming they probably ran into some issues with other animals that they couldn't get him to him till Friday. So then come Friday, 
Um, they did the surgery for him. They wanted us to come get him back. And I was like, not with an amputation. I don't feel comfortable. We live way too far out. I want him to stay the night there. So he wound up staying the night. Um, and then on Saturday, we went and picked him up. Um, now we have, <laughs> so that was just one part of the week. Earlier in the week, um, our, my daughter's little uh, budgie, uh, what else do they call them? Parakeet, I think they call them. Um, the little tiny bird that she's been holding and she's very, you know, used to going over and greeting him every morning and telling him good morning with her little uh, talking device that she had. He wound up just dying. So it was so crazy. I don't know what the deal is with these animals. And so uh, it was it was nuts because me and my mom were just getting ready to go into town. I don't remember what we had to do. And I was talking to him and he came to the cage and I even fed him some romaine lettuce um, because he likes to have that as a treat. And he was standing, sitting there and, you know, just being a bird. And then by the time we had went into town and came back, he was dead. It was just, it was the weirdest thing. Like I can't, and then my friend who I got him from, I was like, what the heck could have happened? I, nothing in his environment had changed. So I don't know. And that's, she said, she goes, well, you know, he might've just gotten a cold or who knows. So um, she's going to probably breed her two uh, birds again. And we're going to get another one because then we know that they're um, hand tamed because she works with them every day and gets them to be very tame. So I think we're probably gonna go that route again um, to get her another bird. She's been kind of sad about it. Um, and then, so Thursday evening, we went to our local Winter Haven. It is a festival of lights. We took my daughter there and had a wonderful time. It was actually um, very decent weather. Um, we had our jackets on, but other than that, we weren't like walking around freezing. We didn't have to have gloves on. We didn't have to have hats on. I mean, we did just because it's kind of our thing, but um, we had an amazing time. It was so beautiful to see. I'm assuming this year their um, uh, theme was penguins because pretty much every one of the houses, and there are hundreds of houses, it seems like, to walk through, there was a penguin somewhere in the little scene. And all of them can do pretty much their own theme. Like there was one that was, um, what is that? National um, Christmas Vacation, I think is what the name of the movie is with Chevy Chase and uh, Quaid, where Quaid, he pulls up in the trailer and he has to clear out his poop chute <laughs> from his trailer. And so they had the whole scene up there. It was crazy. They even had the, uh, you know how the cat jumps up in the tree going after the squirrel or whatever. They had the chair that was on fire, flipped upside down, and then they had a smoke machine behind it that would shoot smoke out of it looking like the chair was actually on fire. It was so, I was like, man, these people are genius. They, and then you walk through and you see all these different um, themes that are set up some people get so elaborate like this one and they have huge yards this one had all these miniature um it looked like a campground and it was like little fires that they had going but it wasn't a real fire it was like you know when they put the fan and then there's the different colored uh little frillies coming up and then there was little anirandac chairs sitting by them and oh it was little campers the campers were probably I don't know, probably about six feet or about six inches tall, maybe 12 inches wide. They were so cute. They looked like those old fashioned, um, not the, not the silver ones, but just neat little, like the turquoise blue with the white stripe in the center. It's just so fun. It was, it was a good time. So I'm glad that we got to go do that. So right now we're pretty much, um, yesterday I spent the day wrapping presents. Um, I know I need to go live with you guys and I need to show you all the goodies that I have because that new catalog does go live. Um, when is it? I think it's the fourth. I can never remember the date. Um, yes, the fourth of January, this little beauty goes live. So I do want to show you guys all the fun stuff and don't forget 
that Celebrations is coming up. So every $50 that you spend in that new catalog, you're going to earn yourself some free products from that. Um, so I think we are going to get you guys around. We're going to go through a couple of things. We're going to do our giveaways. And um, I do have one of the items that I had gotten that I'm going to use tonight um, just to kind of show you guys what it's about. It is actually part of our coming up join special. So if you have been thinking about joining Stampin' Up! in um, during that uh, promotion of the new catalog, we are going to have a join special where um, you can get your hands on this little gem that I'm going to show you. Well, it's not little. It's actually kind of big. But I'm going to show you that and um, kind of go through it with you. So um, I think I'm going to get you guys flipped around now. And we're going to go ahead and get into this. All right, so hold tight. Ooh, if I don't throw you guys all around, geez louise. Butterfingers. Hopefully that's not a sign of what's to come. Hopefully stamping goes well tonight and I'm not dropping everything. <laughs> we will just keep our fingers crossed. Um, this looks a little bit crooked. Let me see if I can kind of straighten you guys out. All right, I think that looks good. All right, so you guys, Mystery Stamping is coming up this Wednesday. I have posted the um, supply list for you guys. You can see it here in the events. I have it posted or over on my blog. You can see it there as well. Join me here on Facebook Live at... 3 p.m. on Wednesday. My paper share for that beautiful little catalog here. This is the catalog that is coming up. So the paper that is in this catalog, I am doing my paper share for that like I do with all of our upcoming catalogs. So the registration is open for that. You can find all the information over on my blog. If you go to the right hand side of my blog, under the categories, if you scroll down, you'll see it say paper share. If you click on that, it'll take you right into this. So you can see everything um, and all the details about that paper share and you can register for that. Now that is not going to include any of the celebrations paper, just to let you know. Okay, so Stampin' Up! has done something new for the upcoming year of their paper pumpkin. So just to let you guys know, starting in um, 2024, which our January kit is available now, that is this one here, it actually is going to coordinate with one of our new sets called the um, Perennial Lavender Sweet Collection. This is the new January Lovely Lavender that is in um, the subscribe period right now for January. You can get that through January 10th, and then that promotion will no longer be available. But starting in 2024, Paper Pumpkin will offer a new add-on every three months that coordinate with multiple kits. The Love, the, Love of Spring dies, which are right here, you can see them, um, will coordinate with the January, February, and March Paper Pumpkin. You must be a subscriber to purchase the add-on. So to subscribe, you can simply go to my blog, go to promotions, and when you see the um, January Paper Pumpkin, you can subscribe there. And you can, um, in order to get this, uh, the um, Love, Love of Spring Dyes, you have to go into my online store to purchase that. Now, you will get four dies that coordinate with the three months. So every quarter, they're going to put out a new die add-on. And so it will go with the three um, kits when you subscribe. And that is $12, which is amazing. As um, I think they really realized that doing add-ons every month was just a little bit too much for everyone and um, it kind of just became overwhelming. So I think them doing it this way is awesome because then you get a lot more out of your dies than just a one month um, kit. So 
I think that's really awesome that they wound up doing that. Each kit comes with everything you need to make several fun projects. The add-on simply keeps the crafting party going. You can order the add-on beginning December 11th. Act fast. The add-on is only available while supplies last. So just to let you guys know that, and there's more information on this under on my blog. So when you go to promotions, just scroll down until you see the current uh, paper pumpkin. Okay, so you might be wondering, what is this big box here? Well, this is part of the upcoming join promotion. So let me take this out of here. Oh, and by the way, my blog is stampinthepinkbarn.com. It's right here because I didn't say that. All right, this is the first time opening this, so you guys are gonna see it. Oh, with me too. Oh my goodness, okay. Oh, that thing's kind of heavy. All right, let me get all this foam off of here and put this here and put that there and then we're gonna open this up, but you know what? I have this thing upside down. And this is glass, so that's why it's so heavy. Hear it? It's a glass mat now. Um, this is, um, so that's 12 inches. So it is 17 inches, 17 inches wide. And it is 14 inches um, deep, I guess you would say. All right, so if this is awesome. Us as demonstrators, we had the opportunity to order this ahead of time so we can show it to our customers and get them excited about joining our team um, and getting this beautiful thing. Now, I will let you know that when we have a join special like this, um, a lot of people get upset because they weren't able to uh, get this. So I want you to know that that's why I'm showing it to you now so you can be prepared to um, get your list ready with all the stuff that you wanna add to your starter kit. Um, let me get these off of here. So you will know what you want when this promotion goes live. Okay, so this is going to cover my little thing here because it is so big, but there's more that came with this that I want to show you guys. So it comes with the glass mat and then it comes with the accessories here. So this is, you know, our, our um, Stampin' um, chamois here that we have, or Simply chamois that I clean all my stamps with. This is a big version of that. Pretty much it's made out of the same stuff and it is moist and you just keep cleaning it as you need. But if you get ink or anything on your glass here, you will simply be able to come in and just wipe off your ink. I know my light is glaring off that, so hopefully that doesn't drive you guys too crazy. I feel like I'm awfully far to one side. So let me see if I can move that this way a little bit. Oh, my cords are all wrapped around this thing. What is going on here? There we go. Jeez. Okay. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Okay. So this little mat will just wipe the glass right off. Again, you can keep getting this moist and wet and to keep it um, ready for use. Now, this little pad here is silicone. And so this will stick to this and it will not move. If you flip this thing up, that thing is not coming off of there. It is meant to stay on your glass. So when you're working and you need to set that aside and then color and do your stuff, the really cool thing is if you have one of your reinkers, 
So if you had your reinker and you wanted to put a couple dots in there, fill some water up in here, you could use your um, your aqua painter and dip it back and forth between the water to color something in watercolor that you wanted. You could take one of your stamping pads, sit here, put some water here. You could do different colors if you're doing different colors. This will stay in place because that's silicone. Also, um, these little things right here, I don't have a paper pumpkin sitting handy. Um, I'm trying to see if there is a stamping spot. Sometimes she has those sitting here. But our little stampin' spots fit right in these little holes. So even if you buy the um, right here, you know how I always tell you guys to, um, if you don't wanna buy all the big pads, we have the little white Stampin' spots that you can purchase and add your reinkers to and have your own little, uh, where are they at? Your own little ink pads. And they're great for traveling since they are small because they're about one inch by one inch. Um, of course, when you're looking for something, I left my catalog, which I have everything marked and I know where to go. Oh, there they are, right up there. So these, um, you can order them this way. They are on low supply. I do know that. So if you don't have these, you need to get them ASAP. Um, it comes with a pack of five of the little stamp and spots. They're uninked, so you can ink them with any colors you want. And again, they fit perfect in these little spots here. So this is really cool. I love this little handy guy. So I just wanted to set this here so I'll just go ahead and use it today so I can share with you guys how fancy it is. Um, just be careful, don't drop anything on it because like I said, it is glass. I'm pretty sure it's probably tempered glass though. But like this fancy little coffee cup, I definitely don't wanna hit it on that because I will wind up breaking my coffee glass before I wind up breaking this. But that being said, I will be wearing coffee for the rest of the night. And that doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> Just saying. All right, let's get to some of our giveaways. So you guys are joining me tonight. Today is uh, December 18th. This is Mystery Stamping. Tonight, we are going to be featuring the Magical Meadows, and I will show that you that in just a few moments. Let's get to our giveaways from last week. <clears throat> so for our giveaways from last week, we were using the um, Modern Garden. Isn't that what it's called? Yeah, Modern Garden set. And so we made this really neat card here. This card I'm going to give away for um, liking last week's video. So all you have to do is across the bottom, there's like the little thumbs up, there's the little hearts. Throw me some little thumbs up, throw me some hearts and that will get you um, in the giveaway for one of the cards that I'm going to be making tonight. But this little neat pop-up card <clears throat> that I made is going to be going, oops, I guess she doesn't need to have this on the back of there. This card's gonna be going to Anna Rebadu. So Anna, thank you so much for liking last week's video. So this is gonna be coming and this lays flat in an envelope. That's gonna be going to Anna. Okay, and then for commenting last week, so when you come in here, tell me where you're watching me from. I love to know where everybody is from. Hello, Pat Frost. Um, Hall, Holwinski, Holwinski. Welcome, dear. Um, so this one here is we did with the Calypso Coral and we just did some of the um, Versamark on this to give a little background there. And that's what I did in the inside. This one for commenting last week is um, coming to K Wire. So K, this is coming your way. Congratulations. 
And then when you come in here, hit that little arrow down at the bottom of your screen. There's a little arrow right over to the left hand side at the bottom and share my video to your news feed. That really helps me a lot to help grow my small business and to get other people who enjoy crafting to watch along with us. You might see one of your friends in here and that's always fun to give them a shout out. Um, when you share my video, make sure you come back in here and in the comments, tell me that you shared it. So just simply write the word shared in there once you've shared my video and that will get you into the drawing for sharing. So I decided that this week I am going to give away a pack of the textured chic memory cards and more. This was such a beautiful, uh, sweet collection that we had. And I just love these little memories and more pack. So um, I decided that I would give this to one of my lucky sharers. Um, so this is going to go to Marcia Lynn. So Marcia, this is going to come your way. So watch for your guys' happy mail. I will be mailing those out um, at the end of the week when I get all of my um, customer uh, kits put together and all that kind of stuff. I mail everything out at the same time. So you guys are going to have to let me know um, how tonight's video is going. My mom reset her router and I'm hoping that it helps with, I know last week we were having issues with it skipping and buffering and doing all that kind of stuff. Hopefully tonight with having um, that uh, router be um, rebooted, hopefully we don't have any problems going into tonight's video. All right, so I am going to be using the Magical Meadows um, bundle tonight. I'm going to be using, now this die set has a Hollowinski. Okay, well, sorry for slaughtering your name, Pat. <laughs> I'm good at doing that. I'm horrible at saying names. So thank you for correcting me. So um, this is this two set of dies that come with this. It's not two sets, it's one set, but this is a big, huge die set that comes with this. So if you haven't seen these, which I'm pretty sure you have, because these are in our uh, current mini catalog that ends here coming soon, which is so sad to see a catalog go. But then we always know that there is a new catalog to come. All right, so the first card that we are going to do. So don't forget that when you shop with me this week and your order is $35 more or $35 or more, and you use my current host code, you're gonna get enough product to make all three of the cards that I am going to be showing you guys tonight. So I have this card here, then this one, and then the last one. Oops, I missed the middle one. So these are the three cards that we're going to be making tonight. Very, very beautiful cards. I love the elegance of the colors that is in with the paper, with the... Um, magical meadow now with when you buy this as a sweet collection it does have two uh papers in two designer series papers in this collection this is the specialty designer series paper because as you can see it's got all those beautiful foily colors in there and then you've got the regular designer series paper that coordinates with the stamp set stamp and dies so I'm going to be using a little bit of both, and then I'm actually using the ribbon that comes with the Sweet Collection as well. So if you're not sure what a Sweet Collection is, um, it is in our catalog. I'm also using the um, Faceted Gems Trio Pack, which is a, another part of this Sweet. And I keep forgetting to mark the catalog before I show you guys and then make you guys have to sit here while I thumb through this. There it is right there. So um, 
you will find the full sweet collection on page number 37. Now, to find the number right over here, they're calling this suite the Winter Meadows. The sweet collection number is this code right here. It is 9650 and that will get you everything that you see on this side of the paper. So just to let you know that if you only want the bundle, then only buy the bundle. But that way, if you want it all, you only have to put in one code to get everything and not have to worry about, well, did I add that? Did I add this? And whatever. So also this paper, the Winter Meadows 12 by 12 paper is um, on low inventory. So again, um, make sure you purchase that ASAP. Okay, so these are the three cards that we are going to make tonight. So just know that when you place your order with me and you use my host code, again, you're going to get everything that you see. The only thing that I do not send is I do not send any gems. Those are something that you probably have in your collection and that you can add to your cards it's just too hard to get little things like that mailed, but I will include any ribbon and that kind of stuff to uh, get you to make your cards just like mine. <clears throat> now, the other thing is, is if you don't have this stamp and die set, you can always use whatever you already have. Okay, so... For the first card, which is this one right here we're going to be making. Isn't this beautiful? I love this paper. This paper has this deer. Now, when you look at this paper, especially this sheet, this sheet can be cut at six inches and then you can get three on each side of your six um, to be able to make this card. Otherwise, you're gonna be making six cards with this paper if you're going to make them like this. So just to let you know, if you like this design or layout. <clears throat> all right, so our base. So just to let you guys know, um, all of the dimensions will be on my blog. The blog post will be up tomorrow morning <clears throat> and you will be able to find all the dimensions to these cards. You're also going to find a shopping list there and you will find some still photos of these cards as well. Okay, so my base is 11, is 11 by four and a quarter. And I have scored this at five and a half. I'm going to burnish this down. Ooh, this glass is kind of loud. And then I have all these different pieces of designer series paper. So this one is part of that Winter Meadows designer series paper. It is the one that has the little berries on it. I'm going to be using the flip side of that. This is a part of that deer paper that I cut in at the six inch and then cut it down into three, four by five pieces. This is um, four by five and a quarter. This is also four by five and a quarter, but we're gonna be tearing a part of this off to give it that more rugged look. I also have a piece of the, this is just a little scrap piece of that snowflake, uh, what was it called? Snowflake Magic. It's the one that comes with the three different foils. So you've got the more white with the silver, you've got the snowflakes, and then you've got the blue with the white snowflakes. We are going to be die cutting on this to just give us a little bit of um, some dimension to our card. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to take this piece here and using my Timber 3D embossing folder, I'm going to lay this in here using the green side, and I'm gonna run this through my big um, stamp and cut and emboss machine, making sure that I 
Now, since this is 3D, I'm only gonna need my two plates. I'm gonna need plate number one and plate number four, because this is for our specialty um, 3D embossing folders. So I always make sure my hinge is going to go through my machine first, and then I am going to set it just like this, and I'm going to run this through. Are you going to be doing a live New Year's Day? Um, I haven't quite decided yet. I think I might do a pre-recorded live, not so live. Um, just because I don't, ugh, we're still kind of undecided on what our plans are going to be for, um, New Year's Eve. Um, and I, uh, I'm just not sure. I don't want to kind of, well, I know I'm not going to be live for Christmas, obviously. Um, that is spent with my family. Um, New Year's, I think I'm just going to be on the safe side and say that it is going to be pre-recorded um, for you guys. So it will be live 6 o'clock um, uh, my time, mountain time. Um, and if I decide to do a, like, I'm live like I am now, you guys will see me on here live. Um I'm kind of undecisive about it because I'm not, like I said, I'm still not sure what we have going on. So I'm going to just, like I said, I'm going to play it safe and say that I will be doing a um, pre-recorded live, not so live. <laughs> That's how I put it. Because it'll be live at six, but I just, it will be just a live recording of me. Okay, so actually I fibbed about the size of this. This is four by five and a half. So it is the same length or height of this card, but it is going to just be showing a little bit of that pebbled path on the side. See, I failed and I didn't even tell you guys the color of this. This is a pebbled path um, base for this card. This piece is going to go next. And then I have my, again, this is, oh, see, that's going to bug me with my watch keep ticking on that, um, the four by five and a half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this starting up here and just kind of pulling this towards myself at kind of an angle. Now, if I want to make a little bit more of an angle, which I think I do, I just want to pull a little bit more and just come down, just like that. And you can play with that and do whatever your heart desires. And so that is gonna go right on top of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere those two pieces. All right, and this, I'm going to move it over just a little bit so we can still see some of that pretty blue behind there. Isn't that pretty with the um, embossed look behind there? Then I'm going to bring in some of my um, Simply Elegant trim. This is to just add a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of bling. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that just a little bit more length than the base or than this piece of paper and just bring this around and we're just going to tape this to the back.
I never quite know what we're doing on New Year's Eve until kind of the day of. We have a couple of things that we've talked about doing, but nothing is ever like set in stone until, you know, it goes down. <laughs> All right, then I'm just gonna tie a little bow. Yeah, we'll probably go over to my friend's house and who knows what's gonna happen during the night when we do that. <laughs> we normally have a big old bonfire. The kids go in and fall asleep on the couch and then depending on how late the night gets. <laughs> and there might be a little bit of drinking involved, just saying. <laughs> okay, there's my little bow. Hello, Beverly. All right, so I am going to take this. I'm not even gonna try to say last names because I mean, yours is pretty easy for me to figure out, but since I'm not good at saying people's last names, I'm just gonna just not even try. Okay, I'm gonna take a little mini glue dot and I'm going to roll this up like a little taco, just like so. And I'm gonna place that right on the back of that and then place that right up towards the top here. Okay, like that. So I have made, um, I haven't made, but um, I kind of got my mom on a little rabbit hole uh, that she is traveling. So I am big time into fish tanks and so is my, um, my friend. And she kind of got me going on a fish tank. And so me and my mom, we were out the other day and uh, one of the pet stores had a really, really good deal on fish tanks. And so she wound up getting a fish tank in a stand. And so now she is putting the whole base together. I think she got, um, I think she got a 55 gallon. We were debating between a 55 and a 75. Um, and so she's gonna go with, she went with the 55 because that's what I have at home also. And I think that's a good size to start with. My daughter has a, I think she's got a either a 25 or a 30 in her room and we have the glow fish in there and she just loves to stand and stare at the fish. And so fish tanks are just kind of our jam. So I'm glad to see that I finally got my mom hooked on doing it too. So <laughs> she has been out there having fun. Uh, looking at all the different supplies that you can get and the different decorations. <laughs> okay, so I have brought in for the sentiment on this card, instead of making this card a Christmas card, um, I decided to make it a birthday card because I do know quite a few people who have um, winter birthdays. So I am using the Happy Birthday from my Artistically Ink stamp set. You can use any stamp set that has a happy birthday in it. I am using the Pebbled Path ink, so it will match my base. And I'm just going to stamp this on here, just like so, and we're gonna cut this down. So I'm gonna bring in this trimmer and get this as close to straight as possible. Okay, just like that. And then cut that there. I think I'm gonna cut off a little bit more on the back side. And then we're gonna cut right in the center of the happy birthday. Because I want this two separate words. All right, so then we're gonna take that. We need to die cut the piece from for that little bit there. 
this is going to go right on our card like so. So let's go ahead and adhere that. For some reason, it feels like my ribbon is coming loose here. It's playing loosey-goosey. Okay, we're gonna adhere that straight down to that. Hello, Kim. And I'm going to place this straight onto the bottom and then follow it all the way up. And because I have done the embossing on this, it likes to kind of do this whole little ripply thing. So I really make sure that I get that adhered down on all points, just so we don't have any rippling because that's not attractive. So I was telling you guys about my son's cat. He is the coolest little cat, even though he's now a tripod and he's only got one front leg. He is, hello Karen, he is the most loving little cat I've ever seen. Um, I'm so glad my son picked him out. Myself, um, and this isn't to make me sound like I'm just snobby, but I probably would have never picked out a cat that um, I knew was going to have to have an arm um, taken off of it. I just don't think I would ever want to deal with that. But I'm glad that my son picked him out knowing that he was already going to have one of his extremities have to be removed because I'm really proud of my son for saving this cat. Who knows where he probably would have wound up being. Um, so <laughs> just saying, he has to go back in tomorrow and they will. they had to put a fentanyl patch on him to um, keep his pain level down. So they have to take that off of him tomorrow and they um, have to take the staples out of his out of his incision. So he's coming right along and then as soon as all of his medical stuff gets taken care of, we can then, um, my son can actually be his, his adopted dad and not have to worry about any more of the foster stuff. It's just nice when you do the foster adopt because they make sure all of his medical and they make sure he's fixed and all that kind of stuff because before they actually let you become the adoptive parent. So that's always kind of nice. One part about uh, going to the shelter and getting an animal. All right, I'm going to set that aside. Now what we're going to do with this piece here is I'm going to take this die right here. And I'm going to lay this on here. I want to try to get some of this sparkly green foil on here. So I'm going to take this and run this through. So this is what I want here is this little twiggy piece and see how since I did it on that paper there's a little bit of that green foiling in there. It's just really really pretty and adds a little bit of extra bling 
to this piece. Now what I'm gonna do to this is I'm just going to put just a dab of glue right in here. And then I'm gonna pick up my little bow, even though it's got some of that um, mini glue dot there. Just place that just like that. So it will be hanging kind of just out like that. And then we're going to grab some of our, where did I put them? We're going to grab some of our uh, Faceted Gems Trio Pack. And I think I'm going to put a couple different ones on here. So I'm going to use... Um, couple of the this blue I like that this is that lost lagoon and then we'll use one of these we'll put it right over here just like that and then we need to get an innie inside of this card if my hands will work and I'm not even cold, huh? All right, then I'm gonna take this stamp right here and stamp this in the pebbled path right down on the bottom here. I just stuck my hand right in it. Yuck. I think I'm going to actually do it on this side because it's got this little tail swoop. Just like that. And then I think I'm actually going to take the best wishes from this artistically inked as well. and I'm going to stamp that in here also, but I think I'm gonna use the um, Lost Lagoon, <clears throat> since that's the color that is in this. Um, and I'm gonna place that right like that in the bottom corner. Beautiful. Okay, then we're gonna place this inside of this card base. Oh, awesome. Well, you know, it's when you're looking for a birthday theme and you go through all of your cards and just nothing seems to work just right. I love the just plain happy birthday. Like you're saying, Kim, it's perfect for, I mean, you would look at this set and you wouldn't really think of it being for a masculine card, but it worked on your husband's birthday card. Yeah, I like it when there's just a simple happy birthday like that because then it can go on so many different cards and it doesn't look like that big fancy font writing where it kind of looks a little feminine. So this would be a perfect masculine uh, winter card. Okay, so there is card number one. Just kind of a simple, but really kind of an elegant looking card. All right, so let me set that aside. <clears throat> and then bring my stuff out for card number two.
So card number two is also a very simple card, but it really brings in a lot of those colors and you're pretty much just adding the color by using your stamps. I also have a bonus card. Don't let me forget to show you guys my bonus card. I will actually have it on my blog on Thursday. I will add that so you guys can see the bonus card for this whole little um, suite that I'm using today. All right, so what we need for this is, this needs to set aside. This is my card base. I am using white basic. Um, I'm using basic white thick for my card base. This is eight and a half by five and a half and I've scored it at four and a quarter. We're gonna set that aside. These are for my insides, so I'm just gonna set those in there for the moment so we can do the outside of this. My next layer is a four by four. This is my um, Moody Mauve. <clears throat> my next layer is a piece of basic white, and I believe this is three and a half by four and three quarters. That will go on top of that, and that's what we're going to put. be doing some stamping and putting some die cut pieces on there. And then I've got some scraps here that we're gonna be doing some stamping on as well. So let me get out the pieces that I need here. Those need to go over here. Ooh, this glass pad really kind of makes things kind of noisy when you're with these acrylic blocks. Okay, so what I need to mount on here, we are going to be using the berries. Okay, we're also going to be needing this here. I'm gonna put this on one of these. Get all these ready to go. I need this big one here, but I won't need the whole thing, so that'll work perfect. And then this one there, and I think that is good. Yep, we're using all the little greeneries in this. And then we're gonna stamp it twice because we are going to be needing, um, we're gonna stamp it once on our scrap so we can die cut them. And then with the negative, we'll be stamping it twice off on here. So it'll be a little bit lighter. So I'll show you what that's going to look like here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do my little moody mauve. So the colors that I'm going to be using in this one is shaded spruce, blueberry bushel, moody mauve, misty moonlight. Okay, so in order to die cut that, we're gonna do that one there. And then because we're using the um, stamp off method, I'm gonna put this right here in this corner, just like that, so it's that lighter tinge there. Then I'm gonna come in with my Misty Moonlight. Misty Moonlight, I'm gonna use this leaf print here. And I'm gonna do that. Mm, no, I'm gonna go. Let's see, what do I need? No, nope, that'll work perfect right there. Okay, and then with the ink still on here, I need to do this over here, right up here. Okay, so that's that second gen stamp. Oh, I did forget that I am going to be using Pebbled Path because that's gonna be for my sentiment. And then I need my um, blueberry bushel. Listen to the names of these things. They almost sound like you could eat them, right? 
Okay, I'm gonna do blueberry bushel right here. And then I will die cut all of those. And then I'm going to um, stamp this kind of coming up and around here, just like that. Okay, set that aside. And then now with the shaded spruce, And my little, see how I have stamped off on this? If I grab my little chamois here, I can just, well, let me move this. I can just wipe this right off. Pretty cool, huh? All right, then taking my um, shaded spruce, I'm just going to layer this a little bit over that blue, just like that. Okay, perfect. Okay, let me grab this again. Now this thing will not stay new for very long. I will let you know that because you are going to be cleaning up your messes. Okay, then I'm gonna set those all over there. I do need to grab, oops, it's hiding underneath here, my pebbled path. And I am going to use the sentiment that says, the colder weather brings us together. I just think that's a really cute saying. <clears throat> and I'm going to stamp that right like that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use I'm going to use the snowflake <clears throat> I'm going to use the snowflake sky 3D embossing folder and I'm going to emboss this but I think I'm going to wait until I add these. I think I want it all on there together and I think I want them to be um, embossed as well. So let me cut all these out with their coordinating dies. So I will need this one for this, this for the Misty, and then the little berries. So let me die cut these really quick. All right, we'll pull this off and there's all of our little die cut images that we need. All right, so then what we're going to do is I'm going to add this right up over here. Okay, this one is gonna come right across the center here. And then this is gonna come kind of up and over here. Like, like that. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and glue those down. The big brown Christmas truck is outside. <laughs> Guys know what I mean. <laughs> All 
And of course, the dog always knows to let everybody know that it's here. I'm gonna turn that just a skosh. Okay. My mom's taking out the UPS guy. Um, every year we get them gift cards for Christmas. So she's trying to catch our local guy, or not local, but I mean our our normal guy because right now with the holidays, they have helpers coming out. And so it has been hard for us to catch our regular UPS guy. So she's trying to make sure she catches him so she can give him his Christmas present. Because they do us a service and driving all the way out here. And he's a really nice guy. His grandmother actually used to own the home that we, that um, I live in. His grandmother owned that home. So it's kind of neat that he's become our UPS guy. All right. So now I'm going to take this whole piece. And I'm going to put that inside of the Snowflake Sky 3D embossing folder. And I'm gonna run that through. So I had to kind of do a last minute shopping. Um, I've always, for since my kids were extremely little, I have always done PJs um, in a present that the kids always got to open on New uh, Christmas Eve night. They got to open that. There would be a thing of microwave popcorn. There would be hot chocolate. And normally I would put a movie in there for them. Well, um, I was going to not do it this year since the kids have gotten older. My son is now 18 years old. Um, the oldest daughter is grown up, has her own baby, and does her own thing. Does Finn have gray in his beard? I don't know if that's Finn or not. Ask him, ask him say it. Ben? Yeah. Just say that. Well, he's already gone now. He said he'll be back tomorrow. Oh, okay. I don't see him enough to... I. You didn't give it to him, right? No. Oh, okay. Then no, I would just, I would wait. Um, so, uh, so this year I thought, okay, I'm not going to, <laughs> your dog hears that dog barking. It's so funny, right? When the dogs can hear each other. It's kind of like when the dog barks on TV and they um, kind of wonder what's going on. And you're like, hold on, it's just on TV. Don't get all excited. Yeah, my dog does that. Um, so anyways, uh, so I wasn't going to do the PJ thing because I thought, well, you know, the kids have enough PJs, blah, blah, blah. We're just not going to do it this year. Oh, my son let me know that that was not okay and that um, we are still, he still lives at home. He is still part of the family and we need to keep the tradition going. So I had to like last minute buy the family PJs. And it's hard when your kids are not little anymore because... Um, Oh, yeah, when the doorbell rings on TV, <laughs> absolutely. Um, when your kids aren't little anymore, you now have to start looking into, like, adult PJs. Thank God my daughter is very tiny. Um, she is 14, but she only weighs, like, 70-something pounds. I think she's up to 80 pounds now, but um, she's still very, very tiny. And she still wears, like, a girl's, like, a young girl's size 12 so that helps because those are always easier to find than adult PJs. And then when you start looking at adult sizes and you go to buy like a whole package of PJs, it's it's hard to find because you have to buy the shirt and the pants. They're both one size. So it's like my son likes his shirts to be a little bit bigger, especially for PJs. Well, his pants can't be that big because they'd fall off of his butt. So... <laughs> I just told him, I go, you're going to get what you get, buddy. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers, right? All right. 
So I just adhered that four by four behind there watching my margins around my card. And I'm going to just adhere this right to the front. Oh, am I gonna, oh yeah, I have to add a bow to this, but I'll do the bow when I'm done. So that's what um, was supposed to be in the mail today was the PJs. So I knew he was coming and it seems like during Christmas they start becoming later and later because there's so much for them to be doing. Okay, what are we going to do in the inside of this? I think we're going to do some, I've got these already inked up over here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shaded and instead of continuously wiping this thing off, I'm going to just use this because it'll just be easier. I'm going to take this and I'm going to stamp right like that. And I think on the inside, the sentiment, um... I think I might put in, uh, so on the outside we did, the, the colder weather brings us together. We could either do, may this season of sparkle bring joy and delight, or we can do winter wishes. I think I like may this season of sparkle bring joy and delight. <clears throat> I think I like that one. So we'll just put that one in the inside, and we're going to use our... Um, pebbled path wherever I put it there it is so before I get too crazy with my let's add this in here first okay I'm gonna use blueberry bushel Just gonna take this going over like that. Moody Mauve, and we'll put it right up here. And then Misty. Do Misty right down here. Perfect. Bring in all those colors to the inside. Okay, so we're going to add this to our Moody Mauve. just an eighth of an inch of that moody showing. Okay, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Now it's not complete without a gorgeous bow using our um, sheer ribbon here. Again, this is part of the sweet collection. After so many years, it's taken me to try to finally get a bow done by hand. And I finally think I've accomplished it. And it definitely depends on the 
um, ribbon as well. Some ribbon is easier to tie than others. This sheer ribbon seems to be very easy to tie and I love that because we have some ribbon that just aren't as um, pliable and it, that does really make things a lot more difficult. So again, taking a mini glue dot here and this ribbon is one that's going to be carrying over. Um, I read that on the uh, carryover list from our last chance. This um, ribbon is going to be continued. So hopefully they put it in the next uh, annual catalog. That would be really neat because this is a really, really cool ribbon. I love it. And I love that you can still see the card behind it, but it really just adds some of that shimmer and shine that is just gorgeous. Okay, so now let's grab some more of our little blingies here. And let's add, ooh, let's add some bling. Now I think I'm gonna come in with some of these little darker ones here. I'm gonna put that right up there. Because these are kind of that gray color. Put that one there. And then put this one right over here. There we go. All right. And there is card number two. And just doing that embossing over that whole little centerpiece really just kind of gives it a whole nother touch and texture that really adds a whole different element to this card. Um, as you can see on my sample card that I did, I didn't have that embossing folder over at my house, so I just let it be because I wanted to show you guys the difference of when it's embossed and when it's not. I'm not sure if you guys can really kind of catch that here on camera, Hope, hopefully you can. It's just a really, really pretty way of kind of just really dressing up your cards. And it's easy, all you're doing is throwing it through the embossing folder and it's just that easy. Okay, let me move some of my mess and get some of these stamps cleaned up because we're gonna need a couple of, oh, actually the only one that I need is my sentiment, but Might as well clean these so I don't stick my hands in them because hmm, we all know me. I do need this one here and I do need to grab, I think I forgot to grab my Versamark. So I'm gonna need to grab the Versamark and I gotta find it because I forgot my, um, so let me grab because we're gonna do some embossing on this one. Uh, I need the white embossing powder and then I need the Versamark pad. So let me see if I can find it. Or at least yell at her. Hey mom, where's your Versamark pad? Are you in here? Yeah. Okay. Since I forgot mine, I forgot that I was doing embossing on this one. Oh, they're down here. Oh, okay. They blended in. Yeah. Oh, no. Nope. Right nope. Oh, oh, dang it. Yep. That's it. Cool. Thank you. Okay. So now we are going to be making this beautiful. Look at those colors. Talk about rich. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and make this one next. So let me get out all the stuff for that one. Now I went ahead knowing that it was gonna take me a little bit longer when I have to do so much die cutting and everything. So I went ahead and already die cut the little elements that we're gonna need for this, but I will tell you exactly what is needed. All right, so using blueberry bushel as my base, this is eight and a half by five and a half. I am not going to score it. I am simply just going to fold this one in half because since it's just regular cardstock, we don't need to worry about doing a score. Um, my next piece that I need is a piece of basic white. This is four by five and a quarter. My next layer is Lost Lagoon. Um, that is 
one eighth of an inch smaller. So that is uh, three and seven eighths by five and one eighths. And I am using the, uh, did I not bring it over here? Nope, because I think I was going to use the snowflake one again. Now in this card, you can see that I used a different embossing folder, but I think this time I want to use the snowflakes. You can use any embossing folder your heart desires. Okay, I'm gonna run that through really quick. Okay. Come on. There's that. All right, so those are going to get adhered together. And then we're gonna start doing some of our other little pieces here. Now, where did my, I didn't cut that, that's why. Okay, so this one, I need to cut my designer series paper because I clearly forgot that portion of what I was doing. <laughs> Imagine that. Okay. I am using the one that has the green with the, this has got the shaded spruce and it's got some of that blueberry bushel in this paper. Now I already have my little piece cut, so I just need to see the size of that. So that is four and one eighths by um, one and five eighths. So that means this is one and a half by five. Four. And I think I like this one better. I think it has a little bit more color to it. Okay, so that will be adhered. I also am using a piece of that snowflake. Oops, where did it go? The Snowflake Magic, I am using a piece of the white here. That is two and a half by three and a half. Let's adhere these two pieces together. Thank you, Courtney, for sharing. Oops, did I not cut that at the right? Okay, hold on. Well, you know what? It's gonna have to just be like that because I messed it up, but that'll work. This should have been cut down to what did I say it was? Should have been cut to four, and I don't know what I cut it at, but it surely wasn't four. That's okay. I could probably peel it up, but I don't want to destroy that paper, so we'll just leave it alone. Okay, um, this is going to go behind this piece, so we're just going to adhere those together. So I'm not going to place glue all the way up it or down it. And then this piece is just going to get adhered to the side of that, leaving just a small, like, quarter of an inch showing. Okay. Now on this, we're going to go ahead and adhere these two pieces together, our basic white and our embossed layer. Now this, you're only gonna see an eighth of an inch of our white. And because of this, I need to make sure it's all pushed down so I don't get any of that bubbling effect to that. This I'm gonna place right like this. So I'm leaving a little bit bigger space on the right-hand side than I am the left. Ok, 
Okay, just like that. All right, now I'm going to grab my ribbon and just going a little bit longer than my base. Or then my layers. Now I'm going to go down the centerish of this, tie my backs or tape my backs. Now this is a card that I got off of our team swap. So another good part of being a part of my team is we have a whole virtual swap that you can become a part of. And it really helps to give all of us, um, we, us who participate are able to go in and use other people's ideas who they put on for the swaps. So sometimes when you just need a little bit of inspiration from your fellow um team members, it's really kind of nice to be a part of a swap like that. And it will help um, be able to help you create cards when you're just kind of lost your mojo or you just need a little bit more inspiration for a set. And that's what I've done here. Um, so this is not my creation, but I'm just using an idea from somebody else. Okay, that is gonna go like that. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that down now. That's okay that you are late, Courtney. You can always catch the replay on here. It will be um, downloaded over to YouTube when we're done. And also, I will be putting it on my blog. My It will be all up with the dimensions and still photos and everything on my blog tomorrow. Okay, I also need a little piece of this ribbon that I'm going to use to tie a little knot in this just to add a little bit of something, something. So I'm gonna go right here and just take this and tie this right over what I've already taped down. If I can get my fingers in there. Okay, just like that. So I'm gonna pull it the same width as the um, ribbon that I already have there, but I do wanna slide this up and I wish it would just slide, there we go. I want that towards the top. I am going to angle this end. There we are. All right, and then, so I also, brought over using a scrap of the blueberry bushel. I'm going to take this big flagged bannered die using my stylish shapes dies because I haven't used it in a couple of weeks. And I am going to die cut that when I do, I'm gonna get a piece that looks just like that. Okay. We're going to do our sentiment on that. And then also we're gonna need a piece of vellum. And on our vellum, I'm going to take this die right here. I'm going to die cut that. And when I do, I'm gonna get this pretty little vellum piece. Very kind of dainty. And on another piece of a blueberry bushel, I'm going to be taking the one with the little berries on it, this one here. It's got sprigs with berries on there. I'm going to place that on there and run that through. And when I do, I'm gonna get this piece here. I think you guys can kind of see these better on this glass versus my regular table mat. My desktop. Kind of like the glass for that. 
even though it does have kind of a glare from my light, that's okay. You guys can see all the pieces. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take my um, embossing buddy over that. And we're going to take the sentiment that says, may th this season of sparkle bring joy and delight using my Versamark pad. I'm going to Versamark this. And I'm gonna stay kind of closer to the right hand side um, because we're gonna be cutting off the left. Hopefully you guys aren't getting a headshot in there. Get that on there. Then bringing in my white embossing powder. And my little tweezers here. Okay, perfect. Okay, the good thing about this glass is I can do my heat embossing right over it and not have to worry about melting my desktop. But since it is glass, it will get hot. So please um, be careful holding this on there for too long so you do not um, burn yourself. Because it will wind up heating up like a heat stone. I didn't have it on there very long, but yeah, no, it's not warm. Okay, then what I like to do is I like to take that and rub it on whatever I'm wearing, whether I have uh, jeans on or whatever, to kind of just take that excess um, embossing powder uh, from my embossing buddy. I kind of just like to wipe that rest of that residual off. It may be on my end, but I see the tiny squares changing size focusing. Oh, on this? Mmm, I didn't even think about that. It's gonna mess with the focusing, huh? Glad you brought that up. Maybe I won't um, be using this, but at least you guys get to see it this time. Thanks for bringing that up, Patty. I didn't even think anything of that. So now that I'm kind of now stopping and looking at my screen, I totally see what you're saying on my other device how it's focusing in on these squares and then it's losing focus. Yeah, I see that now. <clears throat> I'm glad you brought that up because that is kind of wonky and you don't wanna be having it coming in and out of focus because that can make you sick. Whoops, what am I doing? Had it right the right first time. All right, I'm gonna line this up, turning my words around because I wanted to cut off the other side. <clears throat> like that. I just cut off the little flag part of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this up on both sides using my bigger dimensionals. Let's see if I have any left on this sheet. Use up what I have. Okay, just like that, put a couple of those on there. Okay, and what I'm gonna do with that is look at my sample over here and then I'm just gonna add this right down here. Just like so. Okay, we've got these two pieces here. I'm gonna put my vellum piece on top of the blueberry bushel. And I've got a glue booger on here. Just lightly adding some glue to this so I can then put it on top of this thing. 
just like that. Now I want the top being kind of free to float around as needed. Ooh, see how your glue just comes right off of that? Ooh, that's nice. Okay, I'm going to tuck that in behind there like that so we have that pretty array. Um, so now let me add some glue to this. Actually, I do need to add a couple little dots of glue up here because I want this blue part to be glued on up there. Okay, I'm gonna tuck that back behind there, pushing that down. Okay, I'm gonna actually put some glue on the stem of this vellum piece. Kind of just add that down too. So it's not going too crazy because sometimes your vellum can get ripped because it is kind of so dainty and delicate. So some of these pieces are still sticking up. So as you can see, you've still got some dimension going on. And then we are going to add a few blings because we can. Now, I do want you guys to know, I did notice this last night when I was playing around with these on a couple of, oh, on my um, sample card. When you go to push these down with your finger, it must have been due to manufacture um, uh, the mold that they were made in. Some of these have some really little sharp pieces of the plastic that stick out of them. So please be careful when you're pushing them down with your finger to get a tight adhere um, that you don't poke yourself with that because it is kind of sharp. Um, if it's really bad, you might actually want to take, um, like I have a little finger fi fingernail file and you might just want to fingernail file that little sharp piece off so your recipient doesn't stab themselves on it. Not that they're going to be pushing on their card, but it is a little pokey. Okay, and this one's gonna go right up there. There we go. So what do you guys think of that? Isn't that beautiful? Now we need to um, fill uh, this card on the inside to make it just as pretty. Now what I did on my sample card, I'll show you. I'm not gonna do it on this one because I don't really care too much for the way this turned out, but what I did was I took a piece of this white and then I took one of my, um, one of the small blending brushes and I just blended on a piece of the white there and put it that in there. And then I stamped the two different um, images on the inside. But I'm gonna do something a little bit different just because I don't care for the way that turned out. So I'm going to grab the same paper that we used and I'm gonna cut that down at a half. Okay, and then we're gonna do that at, um, let's do five and a quarter. So this morning I get up and I go outside to feed my goats. One of my goofy um, male goats, he's got his head. So we normally at like garage sales and that kind of stuff, you know, those kitty, um, they're normally made by little tykes. Uh, they're kind of like little climbing play structures, but they're really, really hard plastic. We normally pick those up at garage sales because our goats like to jump on them and bounce all around their little pin and it helps them get exercise and they like to climb up them. Well, they have completely taken, they have a great big one over there that has a slide and um, my goofy goats, the males, they are in rut right now, which means that they're pretty much, that means that they're in heat. And <clears throat> they're kind of being little bucky boys and they wound up knocking down the uh, structure that we had set up for them. And the one, my big, huge male that I have, which he is a boar goat. So in other words, he is a meat goat. Um, and we only use him for breeding. He, he's not food. Um, but he 
<laughs> got his head stuck in one of the little windows like where kids would play and look through. He got his head stuck in it. So this goofy guy, you should have seen me out there at, um, you know, the butt crack of dawn. I'm out there trying to get his, because he's got horns, so you have to like maneuver his horns and maneuver his head back to have both of his horns come through the hole so he can get his head out of there. Oh my gosh. It probably was a total like Kodak moment watching me mess with the stupid goat. <laughs> but I got him out of it because I did call my husband at, her, at first and I was like, um, you might need to come home early. One of the goats has its head stuck in this thing and... I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get it out. And he was like, oh, no worries, I'm getting ready to leave anyway. So, you know, I was kind of debating whether or not he, I even wanted to mess with it. But I thought, oh, I can't leave him like that because, you know, he wasn't comfortable. You could see that he was trying to get it off of himself. And he's a big guy, I mean, he's a full-size goat. And so I was like, okay, I guess I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna try to manhandle this goat, <laughs> which I did. And, you know, to my dismay, it actually worked. I got it off of him, which was wonderful because I didn't think I was going to. But he, if he would have just done it, I don't know how long he has been like that because he may have done it in through the night and he had worn himself out by the time I got to him. So um, it, it was just one of those things where if he would not have worn himself out, he probably would not have been so... Uh, nice to me and let me get him out of there. But he was, and for that, he got his head out. <laughs> so otherwise he would have been in there for a couple more hours until my husband got home. All right, I think I'm gonna use this one. I think I'm gonna use the trees like we did before. Mm, maybe not. Okay, maybe I don't like that. I'm kind of debating here what I wanna use. I think... Hmm, because if I use the, if I use shaded spruce, or actually, you know what, let me try the Lost Lagoon. That might be better because it's kind of a softer, um, come on, thing. It's a softer green. I think that might be better on that if I go to go over that with a, I think I'm going to do well, that might be too much. Let's try this one. I think if we just do that kind of over the side here, that might be good. But we're gonna stamp off first. Once, uh, maybe even twice. Yep, there we go. And then we're just gonna do a very subtle third. Ah, beautiful. Okay, that turned out way better than what I was thinking. So it's very, very light. So I actually did a third gen on that. Um, you can see how dark it is to begin with, and that would have completely kind of taken over my blue, my blueberry bushel with my sentiment. The second one would have still been too dark, but the third time it came out perfect and just added enough of what I needed to just give that a little hint of greenery in there. Okay, let's get this glued in there. And then I will show you the bonus card. And the bonus card is a gift card holder. So it's really kind of fun and easy. Again, I will put all the dimensions and everything for it on my blog Thursday. So if you guys would like to recreate it as well, you can because it's always fun to have gift card holders sitting around the house for, you know, you never know who's gonna stop by for the holidays. Okay, so let me show you all three of these. This is our Make It Monday. So when you place an order of $25 of $35 or more with me and you must use my host code, you're going to get enough product to make all three of these cards minus the little bling gems, but you'll get everything else in your kit. It will also have um, envelopes for them. And I normally um, uh, will tuck everything inside of each envelope for you. So it will keep all of your three cards separate. I will also put in the 
PDF instructions on how to create these cards. Just know that you, um, if you're more of a visual person, you can always come in here and watch the replay of the video to make these cards as well. So that is the Make It Monday, the Magical Meadows. Here is that gift card holder that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I used some of that shimmer paper in the Misty Moonlight. I mean, Moody Mauve. See, I'm getting my ends confused. I used the berry paper on this. Now, this is just a piece of cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, or no, no, what is it? Yeah, that's right. Um, and then I have just put matted another piece there. And um, this is the little gift card holder. So you have the paper on the outside and the inside. And then your little gift card is right there. So you can have these handy with just a couple of little gift cards in case anybody stops by and you need to have that extra little gift for them. All right, you guys, thank you so much. I will not be live with you next week because we are going to be celebrating Christmas with my family. Um, again, not sure if I'm gonna be live on New Year's. I guess it will be a surprise for you guys if I am, if I am live New Year's Day. Um, otherwise, I will definitely have a video up for you guys. It will be my live, not so live um, video if I do it that way. So you guys have a very, very, very Merry Christmas. Have a happy, happy, safe new year. And I will see you guys. I know this is going to sound so funny. I'm gonna, I'll see you guys next year. <laughs> Isn't that so weird when you say that to people? See you next year. That seems like so far away, even though it's like a week and a half away. All right, you guys take care of yourselves. Merry Christmas. Bye. Is the gift card holder instructions available? It will be available Thursday on my blog. All right, you guys, bye-bye.